Glass and honey flavored, yeah. Today I'm gonna get prayed in. Wanna get prayed in with me? All right. Amen. Father, in your holy name, Jesus. Thank you for your work to give me today, God. I pray, Heavenly Father, that it cuts and it heals, God. I pray, Heavenly Father, that that it that it brings people back to repentance, God. That it brings even one person, God, to the cross. I thank you for your blessings, your grace that I don't deserve, and your mercy, God. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, to remove me out of the way in the spiritual world. Let me take a back seat. Holy Spirit, I ask that you just show up and drive. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. 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 I'm going to read real quick a scripture out of Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. Amen? Amen. The scripture, I read it a long time ago and shocked me when I read it. It's one of those shocker scriptures. You don't think anything can bother God because he's God. But there are some things that bother you. Amen? Amen. Amen? Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that every intent of his thoughts the thoughts of his heart was evil continually. This is the one that gets me right here. The Lord was sorry. Some versions say he regretted that he had made man on the earth and was grieved in his heart. You may have seen. Amen? Amen. Who here likes to get open heart surgery? And that's what tonight's going to be. And I pray that God guides my spiritual hands so that I don't cut any unnecessary arteries or veins. Don't want anybody to bleed out. But in case you do, I know that there is a blood transfer you can get right at the cross. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord is watching, the Bible says. The Bible says that the Lord saw the wickedness of man. You see, the Lord is watching and he doesn't miss a thing. He doesn't miss a thing. Scripture teaches us that one day the books, plural, will be opened. You're going to stand before God and there will be books open. The 70 come back to Jesus and they're boasting kind of, you know, they're, pro they're proud that they can cast demons out and 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 and, uh, and and spirits are subject to the name of Jesus. And Jesus says, "Hey, that's good, but be but better to be happy because your names are not blotted out in heaven." He's saying, "Look, it's it, that's cool. You can cast demons out. That's great." But many will say to me on that day, "Did we cast out demons?" And Jesus says, I never knew you. Amen. Just because you cast out demons, don't mean you got Jesus in you. Amen. Amen. Anybody out there? Amen. You see, God doesn't miss, miss a beat. He doesn't miss a thing. He knows every tick of your heart. Amen. He knows every thought, every desire Amen. that's right in your heart. He knows what's going to happen before it happens, but he gives you an option to get out of it. Amen. Tonight, you have an option to get out of it. Amen? Amen? As do I. This is secondary. Being up here and preaching is secondary. You don't preach with words. You preach with walk. You walk your preachings out. Amen. And then you talk them out. Amen? 
Matthew chapter 10, verse 29 reads, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Not one falls without God knowing it. God knows when one bird in the whole world dies. You really don't think he's paying attention to you? How much more worth are you than some birds? You don't think he's paying attention when you're crying by yourself in the nighttime? When you don't know how you're going to be able to do this or do that? You don't think he's paying attention to you when you should have died? Why do you think you didn't? Amen. You think he's paying attention to you and your heart's crying out for one thing, but you're so weak that you got to follow the world and do another thing, but you know you really don't want to do it. But what are my friends going to think? He's watching. He's watching and he's marking down. Luke 12, 7 says, And even the very hairs of your head are numbered. You know how many hairs you got in your head? God doesn't just know how many hairs you got on your head. He knows how many hairs everybody's got on their head. Good God. If that's not a God of detail, if that's not a God who wants to be intimate with you, I don't know what is. Amen. He wants a relationship with you. He knows the number of hairs you have on your head. You can't even remember your girlfriend's birthday. Good God. Amen. Amen. We don't remember uh, our our birthdays. We don't remember our court dates. You know, you know, you know, you're supposed to be there, but you uh, forgot. Amen. 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 So if God's looking and, and and if He's looking and booking and if He's marking down and if He takes note of every single thing that happens on the earth, Amen. What is He looking for? This is God, the Creator of heaven and earth. You know what? God doesn't need us. Shocker. I know. We need God. And even though he doesn't need us, he wants a relationship with you. We learned this here. God called things into existence. Let there be light. Let there be waters. But when it came to man, he formed. He got his hands dirty. He got his hands with dust and made man. And he had a hands-on relationship at the beginning. And that's exactly what he wants right now. Hands-on relationship. How are you gonna be? Like, how are you? How are you gonna be with somebody and never be intimate with them? How are you gonna be with your married, your spouse, and 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 you're just always just talking? And I know that this is the norm today. You know, the world is set up in such a way where there really is no intimate time anymore. Couples have to work, and it's really like hi, bye, high five. You got the kids now, right? Type of thing, and there really is no time. And that's the way it's been orchestrated. That's the way it's been designed. The devil loves to divide and conquer. And there's one thing that he can do, and he did it at the beginning, is if he can divide the family, he can try to conquer. Amen. But uh, how can you go on living and not, and not be intimate with your partner? Not be able to touch them or hug them. Amen? Amen. Research tells us that when a child is born, if that child is not touched physically by hand, within within a week, within two weeks, that child is dead. It needs, we need physical touch. Amen? Yeah, we do. That's a sign of love. Yeah. I mean, you, you can tell me you love me all you want, but man, come and put a hug on me and show me. Big hug. Amen? You know what Jesus did when he was walking around with those lepers? <clears throat> he would go up to them. And touch them and heal them. Nobody else wanted. I'm gonna stay away from that person. I'm gonna stay away from that person. You heard what they do, right? Jesus would go up to them and hug them and touch them Amen. and heal them. God is watching. What is God looking for? Second Chronicles 16:9 gives us insight into this. The eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth. Did you know you're made of dust? Therefore, you're made of earth. Therefore, God's eyes are moving to and from and throughout you, right in your heart. The Bible says in some occasions, Scripture tells us that Jesus knew their thoughts. Jesus is God, and he knows exactly what you're thinking. You might be hallelujah, hallelujah, but in your heart, you're really not even here. 
They're just empty words. I've been guilty of it. Jesus knows. Jesus knows when you put it on the front, when you put it on a show. Jesus knows your heart. Mm -hmm. The eyes of the Lord move to and from throughout the earth. God is searching your heart. Jeremiah, amen, tells us that the Lord, I the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind. Amen. He's searching your heart and he's testing your mind. Did you know every thought you have is a test? Amen. Everything you think is a test. Everything you say is a test. Amen. Before you act on it, you have to think about it. Amen. That's why Jesus says if one even thinks of committing adultery, he already did. Amen. Satan said in heaven that he would ascend above the stars of God. Come on. And the Bible says it took iniquity was found in you about Satan. He wasn't even saying it out loud. He was thinking it in his heart. And God was already hearing it. And it turns into action. By the multitude of your training, you became violent, says about Lucifer. What training? Gossip. Hey, we can take God out, man. Talking to those angels. Hey, we can. He's training. We trade. We trade words. Are they words of encouragement? Are they words of death? The power of life and death, after all, is in your tongue. Amen. Amen. And there they were. They can think of they. Take the creator out. Jesus says in the book of Luke, I was watching Satan fall like lightning. Watching him fall. It was, it was an ongoing event. It was a series of events. Watching. Not I watched and it happened. I was watching. They did, did this and then he did this and he still didn't repent. He did this and he did that. Boom, he fell. He followed through on it. And that's what we do. And this is just an opportunity to stop, to have a change of heart before we hit rock bottom again. Amen? Amen. I know this all too well because it's happened to me too many times, time and time again. Empty words, a whitewashed tomb with nothing but dead men's bones inside of me. And so you really start appreciating what God has done for you. You won't care what people do to you. Amen. But you have to get to that point of appreciation. Amen. And that point comes with hurt, Amen. betrayal, Amen. sorrow, Come people on. talking about Come you, Amen. nobody likes Come you. On. Let me ask you a question. Did Jesus complain when he took that cross for you? No, he did not. Nah. He kept walking. Did you know? Fun fact. Did you know that you, you, just you, not anybody in the room, not anybody else in the world, you are worth more than everything in the world. And that's virtual. You, just you, are worth more than everything in the world. Don't think that you're worth nothing. The Bible says, for what profits a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul. What prophet said nothing? Your soul. If it was just you that Jesus had to come and die for. He'd come and die for you. That's love. Amen. See Jesus doesn't go with the popular vote. Amen. Amen. Because what's popular isn't always right. And what's right isn't always popular. Amen. Amen. God is watching, testing, and examining. The Bible says in Jeremiah, as I was reading before, it says, I, the Lord, search the heart to examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. You know what I deserve? A fiery hell. But God's grace, he tells Paul, is sufficient. My grace is sufficient for you, Martin. Yeah, you deserve that, but I'm not going to give it to you because I love you. And not only do I love you, but I'm going to prove it. I'm not going to prove it, but I'm going to demonstrate it to the whole world. Come on. For God demonstrates his own love toward us. Y'all know it. Come on. Well, we're your sinners. Yes. 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 
Christ still died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When I was smoking meth, I was doing coke, and I was doing all that crazy stuff, Christ had already died for me. When I backslid, when 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 I when I was denying really the power of Christ, I knew Christ there, but I really didn't know him here. Christ was there, but he wasn't in here where he wanted to be. I kept fighting him off with my own emotions and with my own agenda. I have my own agenda, and the world has their own agenda for you. But God says, I know the plans and the purpose that I have for you. God has an agenda for you. Do you want it? Because if you don't want it, someone else will take it. Amen? You know how I know this? Because the kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Yeah, we were violent in the streets. We had guns and gats and knew all that. But are you violent enough to go back and reach souls for the kingdom of God? Are you violent enough to get up like Paul after he was stoned? They thought he was dead and walk back into the city and start preaching gospel again. Are you violent like that? Are you stubborn like that? Let me backtrack. I know you're stubborn, but are you stubborn like that? Amen. I know I'm stubborn. Very stubborn. Amen. Amen. But God is good. Amen. God is watching, testing, and examining. Amen? Amen? So shouldn't we be examining ourselves? Do you examine yourself? We get so dressed up, get all purified to go to a place, right? And we neglect how our soul, how our spirit man is. All malnourished, all sickly, carrying his, carrying his sick bed. We take care of the outside, but are we taking care of the inside as well? Outside is just a shell. Amen? Amen. Outside is superficial. The inside is what God is interested in. Amen. 2 Corinthians 13.5 Examine yourselves to see whether you are in faith. Are you in faith? Or are you in fear? Hmm. Are you afraid of what tomorrow's going to bring? Are you nervous? I get nervous before I get up here. I can always get nervous, right? Like I teach class and stuff like that, and I'm, I'm never nervous when teaching. But when I get up here, man, it's just, whoo! It's a different. I don't know. It's like this is God's word, and I don't want to misuse it, take it out of context. I can't. I can't afford to do that. Amen. It's like handling like plutonium, man. You know, uranium. You don't want to drop it. You don't want to. You have to be very careful. You have to have a suit on and all that. Certified. Let me tell you something about me. I'm not certified. All right? But God certifies me. Amen. Amen. Man doesn't certify me because man didn't call me. God called me. Amen. Amen. But I still treat, I respect the word of God and I don't look to, I don't look to lead anybody astray. And I'm not going to preach a pretty message. I'm not. I'm going to preach what God tells me to preach. Amen. Amen. In this church, we preach gospel. And there's a lot of churches that don't anymore. Amen. To their shame. Amen? Come on. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Or do you not realize this about yourselves? That Jesus Christ is in you. Jesus Christ is in you. Like, I think sometimes we forget, right? Jesus Christ is in you. I've been in situations where, like, my buddy's like, Forgot their kid. Like, where's where's the so and so? Oh my god, we don't know. We gotta go get him. Right? Did you know the parents of Jesus forgot Jesus? They had to go there two days in, forgot what? Where's wait a minute, where, where's he? Oh man, we gotta go all forgot Jesus. Sometimes we get so caught up with what's going on in the caravan of life that we forget about Jesus. And you know where they found him? Exactly where they left him. And that's exactly where you're going to find Jesus. Where'd you leave him at? That's where you're going to find him. Go back. Amen? Amen? And they find Jesus, and he's in the temple, and he's teaching, right? He's got like, all these guys around him, and they're asking him questions. He's like, yeah, that, yeah, this, uh-huh, that. And they well, what, why didn't you do this to us? <laughs> oh, it was Jesus' fault, right? And Jesus did Why didn't Jesus save my Why didn't he heal this? Why didn't... It's all, but why, why did you do that? Why did you do, why did you worry us, right? He says, didn't you know I'd be about my father's business? What? 
about my father's business. Didn't you know that? Come on. Okay, well, in case you didn't, Jesus is about his father's business. Amen. You ought to be about your father's business Come on. in this earth. Amen. Don't worry about who's forgetting what and where they're going. You stay if you have to and be about your father's business. Amen. You don't move till God says jump. Amen. 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 See, Jesus wasn't worried because he knew what he was put here to do. Amen. Amen. The Bible says about Jesus that he didn't commit himself to man because he knew what was in man. You know what's in your heart? You know what's in your heart. Come on now, when the door closes, you just got paid. You know what's in your heart. When it's that time of the month, you know what's in your heart. Amen? Tacos in your heart, man, that's supposed to be in your stomach. Amen? Are you in faith or are you in feelings? Are you walking by faith according to what God has said? Or are you walking according to the fruitlessness of your emotions? We get emotional sometimes. Now you did. I don't care. I'll show you. I don't need you and all this and all that. And then two hours later, come on, baby, let me in. You know what I mean, man? You get all emotional, man. What you get emotional for? Stand by what you say. Jesus says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Sometimes you got to cut people off. Oops. Oh, I'm back. I'm back. Let me get back to that one. <laughs> Amen. It's easy to find fault everywhere you look. It's easy to find fault in everybody else. Everybody else is not the standard. Jesus is. Amen. If you spend the rest of your life concentrating on him, you'll see that for the rest of your life, there's a lot of work to be done in your life. You should have no time concentrating on anybody else. Come on. Come on. Amen. I'm just saying. Amen. Amen. It's easy to find fault. You're not going to get the luxury of that when you stand before God and it's just you. And uh, Tony and Dam and Ray Ray and Dam and so and so and Dam and my buddies. And, and then you're going to be like, well, what's the devil that made me do it? God's going to look down and just say, the devil wasn't even there. You did it. Come on. I was in your heart to do that. You have free will. It's one of the gifts I gave you. Free will. Come on. Amen? Amen. Amen. I don't know. I don't know if you know this, but the world has fallen. No, it's not falling. It has, it has fallen. Thank you. People say, oh, the world's oh, it's 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 fall, it, you know, it's falling. No, it's fallen. It's done. The wickedness of man, amen, is on. Believable, and you know, you know what trips me out about it is that you can turn on the TV, the radio, the paper, and you can read about this, and we do it every single day. Ooh, the millions of people who've been murdered, displaced, starved, amen, cheated, abused, tortured, Come on. or just flat out left for dead. You know what it does to us? Nothing. It's just another story. How hard it is your heart? That's nothing to us. Huh? Six people got their heads chopped off. We praise it. Did you hear that, man? Did you hear that? That's wrong. That shows you the condition of your heart, how backward it is, how callous it is to the love of God and what God wants in this world. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. Woo! I'm going into the right ventricle now. I just got done with the atrium. All right? Keep it coming. Amen. And we have become numb to all this. It's so commonplace. It doesn't even move us anymore. You know what's crazy? It's like you'll hear in the news that like kids got burned or, or somebody's house you know, got shot up and these people died, right? Not one tear. You'll see a movie that's not even real crying all over the place. <laughs> crazy, man. But it's the truth. Amen. It doesn't even move us anymore. That bothers me. I noticed that about myself the other day. Somebody sent me a text message and it was like a mass murder somewhere. And I was like, oh, I, the first thing was like, oh, again? I said, oh, man, what about their families? What about the daughters and the sons they're never going to be able to be with again? 
had nothing to do with it. The wages of sin is death, my friends. Death is going to pay you. Amen? Amen. Sin is going to pay you. And death. Amen? Amen. It doesn't matter that people are dying or going to hell. That doesn't move you. And you know what's even creepier than that? It doesn't move you that your family's dying and going to hell. Whoa, right. Ooh, nice. mm. Amen. Amen. That's a piece of cancer that needs to come out. It's for your own good. Thank you. Our heart is plagued with callous sin. It doesn't bother most of us. We have cancer. The cancer is called sin. And the manifestations, amen, are these. The book of 2 Timothy 3, 2 and 4 gives us an insight of what is going to be happening and has been happening because the world has already fallen. Amen. It says, for in the last days, men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, Ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable. Don't even want to be reconciled back to Jesus. Malicious gossips, not just gossips, malicious gossips want you to die. Without self control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. I had to check a lot of those off of my heart. Just saying. I am perfect. It's only by the grace of God that I'm up here preaching. And it's only by the grace of God and by the blood of Jesus Christ that I'm forgiven. Amen. 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 Me too. I stand on the rock and his name is Jesus. And it's immovable. Believe me. I went from smoking rock to standing on the rock. Jesus Christ. Come on, thank you. And you can do it. You know what's sad is that the majority of the churches have this in their heart. Put a mirror up to your heart. What do you see? Do you see what I see? You gotta watch her. Amen. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The human heart is the most deceitful of all things. Oops. We're working on that right now, though. All right? Do some surgery. And desperately wicked. I know I was desperate to get my drugs. And nobody was going to stop me. And nobody was going to tell me no. I was going to figure it out. If I could figure out two plus two, I could figure out how to get my drug. Amen. Trust me on that. And I would. Desperately wicked. Who really knows it? Who really knows it? God knows your heart. David cries out, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. God, he was tired of it. God, I'm tired of it. Create in me a clean heart, please. And you know what? My spirit's jacked up. I need your Holy Spirit. Can you just put that in me? I'm just tired of the way I'm living. Create in me a, a clean heart. And his son Solomon writes, above all else, guard your heart. Y'all guarding your heart? Or y'all just give it away to your sweetheart? Here, you can guard it. I'm guard me. You ain't going to get it back. And if you do, it's barely going to be pumping. Amen. All right? Amen. Might get somebody else's. This ain't mine. Right? Watch out. Amen. Amen. The human heart, man. What's in you? What is in you? Amen? God asked Satan when he was presenting himself in the book of Job, well, where do you come? God, God calls out to Adam in the garden. Adam, where are you? God already knew the answer to both questions. But he wanted to hear their response. God is asking you. Where do you come? You come from a bad background? 
Amen. God can take care of that. Amen. You come from a broken place? Come on. Come on over here to the cross. God will fix it for you. Amen. Amen. Where are you? Are you here physically, but not here spiritually? Mm -hmm. Are you thinking about somebody else? Is that somebody else willing to die for you like Jesus did on the cross? Where are you? Where are you, Martin? I'm right here. No, you're not. Your body's right there, but your spirit's not. Your soul? Where, where are you at, Martin? I'm right here, God. Jesus asked Peter, Did, do you love me? Yes. Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Yes. Do you love me? Yes. Sometimes Jesus has got to get your attention by asking you the same question over and over again. You ever been asked the same question over and over again? Amen. Yeah. It usually comes in the form of, where were you at? 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 Oh my God. God has a way of getting your attention. Amen. Where are you at? Amen. Are you with me? Amen. God is good, yes? Amen. Amen. Let's move on to the eight order. <laughs> so far, so good. All right, no slips. Praise God. Guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Amen. There's another the verse that says, "Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks." You want to know who somebody is? Just shh, listen to them. It's funny. I was going to the dorm, and I hear all the all the. Everybody's talking, right? I walk in. Shh. Okay. Amen. Amen. Believe me, these walls, these walls are thin. You can hear everything. All right. God is good. Amen. God works on my heart too, and He uses all of you guys. And and I'm honored, and it's a blessing. To have crossed paths with every single one of you. Amen. Same thing here. God is good. Amen. Amen. What's flowing from your heart? Jesus says, hey, if you're thirsty, come and drink. Rivers of living water will flow from your heart. That is, Jesus will flow from your heart. Amen. Proverbs 23 26 says, My son, give me ear. Give me your heart, and let your eyes delight in my ways. Man, give God your heart. Look, dude, I don't know if you've noticed, but <laughs> things oh. haven't been going good for you Amen. in the past mm. 20 years. <laughs> give God your heart, man. Amen. You know who did the first surgery on planet Earth? God. God. Took a rib for men. Amen. Um, wouldn't you want to go to the most experienced doctor to do some surgery? Amen. Yes. I'd go to God. Wow. Most qualified, most experienced. Thank you. Just saying. Oh, by the way, he doesn't charge a thing. Jesus paid for it on the cross. Hello. Amen. 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 Hmm. The assurance of his insurance. Amen. 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 Oh, Obama care. Mm -mm. Oh, Jesus cares. I got Jesus care, baby. Oh, I got that Jesus care. That's, oh, Jesus cares insurance. I need that. Amen. Amen. Then the Lord saw the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and every intent of his thoughts of his heart was evil continually. Then the Lord, and this is what gets me. Then the Lord was sorry. You ever been sorry about a decision you made? Amen. Amen. And how much I never brought that dude. <laughs> it's just a headache, man. I wish I hadn't said that. If I would have just done this different. Amen. Nine times out of ten, I'm in a jail cell thinking that. If I would have just turned left instead of right. If I would have said <laughs> instead of zagged. It's all of somebody, something, something. And, oh, it's me, man. We love you. Amen. 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 The Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and was grieved in his heart. You know, God has a heart. Yes. And it bled on the cross. Ephesians 4.30 And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. You were sealed by the Holy Spirit. 
and we greet him. The same one that gets us out of those pits that nobody else could and everybody else abandoned you in or probably put you there. We grieve the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 63, 10 says, but they rebelled. They rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. Are you rebelling? Disobedience is as witchcraft, the Bible teaches. Are you rebelling? Do you have a rebellious spirit? Come to the cross. Amen. Jesus can take care of that for you. The reality is he already has. You just have to believe it. Amen. And not just that, but you have to receive it. I believe there's lots of money in those banks, but it's a lot better when I receive it. Amen. 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 Are you with me? Amen. America has grieved God. Look at the state that America's in. It ain't good. They have to give you a stimulus check to stimulate the economy. You know what that means? That means that the heart has stopped, so a doctor has to put his hand in your heart and stimulate with his hand. You're not doing it on your own. America's not doing it on its own. Now, it's a great country founded on great morals and have and has gone far from that. I urge America to come back to the cross, come preach gospel, and pray for your leaders. Amen. Pray for the president. He needs all the help he can get. The church has grieved God. Oh, my Lord. I got a guy here that, that, that's working down at the stripes, I ain't gonna say no names. He lives here at the home, and this is and this is a repetitive thing that he tells me. Man, Martin, non-believers treat me better than believers do, bro. I believe that. I believe that. When I was out there running the streets, the drug dealers. The people that everybody turned away, they took care of me better than my own family did. My own family wouldn't even open the door sometimes. Come on. And if they did, they really didn't want me there. Thank you. You ever somebody open the door but really don't want you there? Yes. They're just watching every move you make. <laughs> and you know that, right? You know that. But you've got nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I take refuge in the cross, man. The Lord is my shield and my buckler, man. The Lord takes care of me. Come on. His right hand sustains me, man. Come on. Every single day, every single breath is His, and it's on loan to me. And I will have to give an account for every breath I took Thank and what I did with it. Amen. And we take it for granted. The world has grieved God. Coronavirus is everywhere. <laughs> masks. You got to wear masks. Amen? Amen. Walking around looking like the G.I. Joes and Bane. Good oh God, man. It's crazy. But this is the state that the world is in. See, we have a form of godliness, but we deny the power thereof. A lot of us preach, a lot of us teach, a lot of us come to church, but we deny the power in the blood of Jesus Christ by the way that we live. We deny the power of the Holy Spirit by the way that we live. We deny the power of the cross by the way that we live. We deny the power of the resurrection by the way that we live. Come on. That's truth. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 10, 29 says, How much severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an, uh, treated as an unholy thing, the blood of the covenant sanctif that sanctified them and who has insulted the spirit of grace. Save me, God. Save me, Jesus. And you do it. And you go around and you do the same thing over and over again, knowing that you're going to come back and ask for forgiveness. And you go around and you do the same thing again, knowing that you're going to come back and just ask for forgiveness. And you go around and you ground all day over and over again. And that's what we do. 
Matthew 23, 37 says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. This is Jesus speaking. You who kill the prophets. You know, people don't like it when, when, when somebody's telling them the truth. Man, tell the truth with boldness. Amen. I'd rather God be proud of me and the whole world hate me than the whole world be proud of me and God turn me away. Amen. Amen. With boldness. You're going to die anyway. When I meet my maker, that's going to be awesome. I don't know if you can high five God, but I'm going to try. You can't look at him, so I'm be like, yes. <laughs> Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you. If you're really a disciple of Christ, you're going to get you're going to get some rocks thrown at you. You're going to get people coming after you. You're going to get people talking about you. No one's going to like you. But this is the way Paul puts it. To live is Christ and to die is gain. Amen. I wouldn't have it any other way. How long have long to gather your, your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under the wings and you were not willing? How many times has Jesus stretched forth his hand and you were not willing to take it? You were not willing to take it. There's always tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it another time. This ain't for me. Not right now. John 5, 6. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to be made well? Well, do, like, do you want help or not? Because the guy was like, oh, every time I try to... Excuses, excuses. And Jesus just... He looks past that. He gets right to the point. Look, yeah, that's nice. Do you want to be made well? Like, I ain't got time. Look, do you want it or not? Stop playing the role. Stop playing the game. Amen. You're only playing yourself. You're wasting time. Amen. You don't have to answer to that. Check this out. Do you want to be made well? Amen. Yes. Do you? The Bible says repent. First message Jesus ever preaches coming out of the wilderness, repent. As Jesus, Jesus is God. Jesus saw the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. He saw all the, all the people getting slaughtered in the Old Testament. He saw Satan walk the fall like lightning. You know what, man? Coming out of all that, that would be my message. Repent. And nothing, I just say nothing. Repent. Amen. There's a typhoon of water. And it's coming. It's just a big old wall. It's coming. And you're the only one that knows it, man. And you're running, man. You're running. And you see somebody in front of you. Run! You're not going to explain. You're not going to do run! Right? And you start running. That's what Jesus does. Repent! First John 1 John 1.9, if we confess, Come on. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Jesus is sewing up our heart now. All right, here we go. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just. Amen. And he will forgive us of our Amen. sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Second Chronicles 7.14, and my people, is anybody here God's people? Amen. I'm talking to you. And my people who are called by his name, if they humble themselves, that's a tough one. If they humble themselves and pray, man, you better get in that prayer closet. Dust off the ground and all that. You haven't been in there in a minute. Get in there, especially in these times. You were born in this world, in this age, in this time for a purpose such as this. Amen. To go preach to the lost. Amen. To get sinners saved. You've been drafted into an army. Some of you might go AWOL. Don't. Amen. Amen. Pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will hear, heal their land. Anybody here got sicknesses? God wants to heal you, man. Pray to God, humble yourself. 
Man, greater it is to humble yourself than for God to have to come and humble you. Thank you. Humble yourself, man. Get off that high horse. If it runs off, cool, man. I'll get another horse. Not a big deal. Hey. See, God wants to forgive you. He yearns to forgive you, and He proves it on a cross with three nails and His Son. Amen. He wants to forgive you. He yearns to forgive you, and we need His forgiveness. I said we need it. I mean, we need it, man. That's the only way we're going to be able to move forward in the kingdom of God is to be forgiven of God through the blood of Jesus Christ, through salvation. Amen? Amen. That's the only way. There is no other way. There is no other way to get into heaven but that. Jesus is the way. He is the door. He's the answer. He's the bread of life. Anybody here starving spiritually? He's the one. Amen? Amen. Joel 2 12 reads this way Return to me. Return to me with all your heart. Amen. Not half your heart. You can't serve two masters, by the way. And in case you didn't catch it at the beginning, God can see your heart. Right? It's like walking in with an elephant and you're going to sneak it into your room. But you got to get past mom, dad, the brothers, the sisters. You see the elephant. That ain't going to happen, man. God sees it. He sees your heart. All your heart he wants. Maybe some of us haven't given him all our hearts. Maybe some of us have given portions of our hearts and parts of the day. You know what? It's prayer time. I'm going to give God my heart. But when it's done, I'm going to give my heart back from him. But then when it's prayer time, I'm going to give God my heart. But when no, all of it, all the day. That's tough. And it requires discipline. But you can do it. Amen. God wants to forgive you, yearns to forgive you. Amen? Second Corinthians 6 2 says, Now is the day of salvation. Right now, this moment, you're not hearing this message that wasn't pre thought of or anything. This is what God put in my heart to preach. This is what I preach. And I didn't want to. I preach a nice message one day, man. Everybody's all happy with me. Oh, man, I get these looks. Look at your heart, Martin. I know, believe me, I have to it's in here. <laughs> now is the day of salvation. Right now, you can make a choice. Amen? John and Jesus, both after being isolated by God to be with God, remember what the first message was? Repent! The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. There's a wall of water coming to run. Explain to me about this wall, please. <laughs> How big is it? Is it cold? Is it hot? Shh. Deuces, dude. I'm out of here. Sometimes people are like that. They want explanations and they want you to, you know, all just so they won't listen. Also, they're not going to turn from their ways. The Bible says don't cast your pearls before swine. Amen. They'll trample on them and they'll turn on you. Don't waste the time with people who don't want to listen. Amen. Amen. Jesus did it. Oh, please stay another. No, nope, we got to go. Come on. Hmm. I got people to preach to. Amen. You guys didn't come over here because of the gospel. You came over here because I gave you something to eat. That's what Jesus says. Amen. Amen. Some people just want what Jesus has. Amen. And don't want Jesus. Amen. Repent. Matthew 4, 17, Jesus began to preach, repent. Today's the day of salvation. Amen. Change that mind. A change of mind that leads to a change of heart, that leads to a change of action. That's repentance. Turning from sin and turning to God. That's repentance. Stop living a sinful lifestyle. That's repentance. Amen. Get some act right. Amen. That's repentance. Amen. Why don't you help that dude? He can't do it all by himself. That's Thank repentance, you. man. Thank you. This is the last verse. I'm not close with this. I made it through, man. Jesus. Right. 
but he died. I hope you died yourself, but all your spirit will get better. Amen. Acts 3.19 Therefore repent and return. Just because you in church don't mean you in church. Amen. Therefore repent and return so that your sins may be wiped away in order that times of refreshing Somebody need to be refreshed. Amen. 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 I need to be refreshed. Pour it on me, Holy Spirit. Pour it on me. So that times of refreshing may come. You got to repent so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Amen. Ain't nobody perfect. I ain't perfect. God knows me all too well. I don't try to hide it. I am who I am. But more than that, I am who God says I am. Amen. Amen. And I am forgiven. Thank you. And I am redeemed. Amen. And I own that. Amen. 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 Now, this is an opportunity, like I said at first, to repent. To turn away from whatever it is. I don't know. I'm not God. <laughs> Honestly, I don't want to know. You ever somebody come up to you? Hey, man, we do that. I don't want to know. Just <laughs> keep it to yourself. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Take it to God, man. Because he already knows. Ask for forgiveness. Forgiveness Amen. is for you. To give you another opportunity. Repentance is to turn from. Turn from. All that craziness, man. They're going back there anyway. So we're just going to... When you play a song... Give it to God how you want to give it to God. Amen. You come up here, you stay in your seats. The altar is in your heart. When you come up here, you're making a, a public declaration. That's all it is. That's the repentance. 